And in this video, I'll discuss uh, why it's important to move from a flexible SSL connection to a more strict SSL connection. And uh, this video will apply to those of you that are using Cloudflare for they, their domain. Uh, before I show you the steps on how to switch from flexible to full or uh, strict, I'd like to explain uh, why I think flexible is bad. With flexible, you have appearance of a secure SSL connection, especially if you're visiting a website uh, that's enabled by Flexible. You will think that it's secure because you have a checkbox here and it shows connection is secure, but in reality, it is secure only halfway of the communication. The other half of the communication from Cloudflare to your origin server uh, the uh, request gets decrypted and sent over regular HTTP request. And by continuing to use the flexible, you're exposing your website to potential attacks. Moreover, if you go to full or to strict, uh, you can enable HTTP2 protocol on your server and uh, it enables your website to be served uh, faster and to be more performant because multiple requests, when you're requesting a website, multiple requests will be served over a single SSL connection. And with better speed of your website, your website will rank better in Google search results. Also, I'd like to show you a little extra. It doesn't matter if you're using any of these three options, flexible, full, or strict. You can enable the strict transport security. And it means that strict transport security headers will be added to your request and it will instruct browsers to always request HTTPS. And also I'd recommend when you're enabling strict transport security to configure the maximum wage header. In my case, it's one month and it will enable browsers to cache street transport security headers, which means better speed, better performance. And now, when I have explained why flexible is bad and strict is better, you can continue on downloading certificates for your origin server. Continue by creating certificate and check that the host names are okay. Usually you don't have to change anything. It applies to any kind of subdomain and uh, the main domain and create. And this field you will save into CRT and this field you will save into private key field. And now this part is about assigning the correct permissions to your certificates and the same rule applies. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're using it on Apache or Nginx server you have to apply it to the correct user that's running the Apache or Nginx, and it's usually www.data. Or in case of Nginx, it can also be Nginx user. Find on your server the path to your certificates. and assign to the correct user and group. And also what I would like to assign are permissions. And I often use a read-only uh, 400 rule uh, has uh, read-only permission for the owner and while others and the group have no permissions. As for the certificate, it should be read only by anyone. Also, what I like to check when I paste the certificates, I like to check if the certificates are valid. And I can do that by issuing an open SSL command. Back to your certificate. And by issuing this command, you should get all the information about your certificate, the issuer, the 
I don't know, expiration date and such. And for the key, you can also check your key by issuing this command. And if your key is OK, you should get a response, RSA, key, OK. And this covers assigning the correct permissions and assigning to the correct group. As for Nginx, go to configuration file for your Nginx website. I suppose you already have it. And your configuration can look something like this. So if you're using the strict connection, strict encryption, you would want to use uh, serve your website only through 443. If there's a case that the user requests your website through HTTP, and it doesn't matter if you're using strict transport security headers or not, because the requester might be uh, not from the browser, it can be from curl or WeGet or other software. You would like, uh, you would want to redirect or HTTP requests to a more secure connection. And in this case, for the secure Connection, it listens to 443 port and HTTP2 protocol is enabled, which enables to serve multiple requests over a single SSL connection and point your certificates to the correct location. I'd advise before restarting the Nginx, be sure that the configuration is all right and you can check it by this command. So that covers Nginx configuration. As for the exact configuration, the example configuration for Apache might look like this. So again, anything that's served on 80 should be redirected to HTTPS. And this line here enables the HTTP2 protocol and as I said earlier, HTTP2 will allow a more performant website, more the faster website, as the multiple requests will be served over a single SSL connection. And as for this part, it turns the SSL engine and uh, points to your certificate files. And again, when you're finished with Apache configuration, you can verify that Apache configuration is correct, the syntax is correct, by issuing this command. And last point of this video, uh, you might have come across uh, this interesting landing page, the Invalid SSL Certificate. And if you get this kind of page, then you have error in your steps. I usually get that kind of error if uh, I didn't create a root certificate, I accidentally went and created a client certificate, I pasted maybe the certificates wrong, there's maybe a typos, extra space or other inaccuracy, and uh, maybe I changed my domain name because SSL certificate uh, does not match the requested domain. Other reason might be that the certificate is expired or Cloudflare still requests the certificate from cache. So what you can do is go to your domain settings in Cloudflare and purchase your cache. And also if you change the, recently changed your C name or A name record, uh, it might be the case that the Cloudflare DNS changes haven't yet propagated. So Wait maybe for an hour or two and recheck again.